Everyone, welcome. We're going to solve this problem together, but first try it on your own and then resume the video. When you're ready, we'll do it together. All right, let's read the problem. It says that a solid object was sliced to form two new objects, and each of the new two new objects had a circular base. Which shape could not have been the original object? All right, so if we have a cone, right? It's a, tri it's a triangle. So it's not. If you can imagine that if we slice a cone like this, right, and it's hard to picture here in this diagram, but if we slice it and then we pull apart those pieces, what we'll have is essentially a big cone, a, a small cone on top, and then a shape, if I'm going to pull them apart now, on the bottom, it's like something like this. This is called a frustum. So we have a cone and a frustum. Frustum is like a lampshade, if you've ever seen a lampshade, um, if you have a lampshade. And what they're asking, saying here is that this face and this one right here, what shapes are they? Well, in this case, it's, they're both circles, right? Because what happens with the cone is if you cut it parallel to the base, you get the shape uh, on the face that equals the base. Say that again, sorry. If you cut it parallel to the base, the shape that you see these, on these two faces here is also equal to the shape of the original base there, the circle. So the cone's out. That can get us um, two circles. And the same with the cylinder. Draw a cylinder, circle. Oh boy, that's terrible. We can do better than that. Um, so a cylinder, right? Let's say I have a circle, and then I want to um, draw two lines down. Some cylinder, right? And I'm going to estimate the bottom here like this. So here, if we if we cut again parallel to the base, we're going to get that circle because here. If I cut lines right there, and then you kind of reimagine my cylinder again over here. Oops, I use blue to keep the color consistent. So here, if we, sorry, if we have another cylinder after we cut it, what we essentially get now are two cylinders. One's on the top now, and then I'll pull it apart. Imagine one on the bottom here. So the same cylinder essentially cut in two forms two smaller cylinders. So that also makes sense to me that this face right here is a circle, and so is this face right here. So that would give us two cylinders. And then we have, let's jump ahead to the sphere. So imagine, and I'll use orange, thinking of basketballs here. Uh, March Madness just ended, and I actually watched one of the games, so it's kind of cool. Um, so let's say we have a sphere, and I cut it really in any direction, but I'll cut in the same way as I've been cutting today. If I cut uh, this time, horizontally, what will I have? Well, I basically have two hemispheres. So this is my sketch. It's a little, a little bit tougher, sorry. So this is a hemisphere right here that we just cut. And then on the bottom, let me, let me just go down a little bit. At the bottom here, I have another hemisphere. Right? So the, the sphere, imagine I'm drawing it perfectly, um, now has a circle up here and a circle down there. right? Just roll up some clay and, and take some floss and do this. Cut it. You'll see what exactly what I'm talking about. Play-Doh works really well with this and floss, or if you have a cheese cutter. So what's left? The answer is the prism. Why? What's a prism? Well, um, we can't get the circle out of the prism because the prisms don't allow for curvature. In eighth grade, the kind of prisms we're familiar with, or you might be familiar with, are either triangular prisms or rectangular prisms. So a rectangular prism could be a cube, but it's essentially uh, a square or rectangle um, stretched over a height, right? So this is my rectangular prism. So if you have the rectangular prism, right, and you cut it from any angle, see there's no curvature on the shape, each of the faces are flat. Any way you cut it, you're going to get other shapes, right, that also have flat sides. The circle is all curved all around. You can't cut this thing anyway, but you can, you can get lots of cool shapes out of this. Uh, a cube, you can even get a hexagon. Look up the wall of fire on on MoMath, M-O-M-A-M-O-M-A-T-H, uh, MoMath. You can see how you can get different cool shapes out of this, but none of them have curvature. They're not going to form the circle. The other prism you're probably familiar with in, in, for this kind of problem is a triangular prism, which is a triangle, also stressed over a height. So this also has, has essentially no curvature, right? And you can cut it any way you want. You won't be able to get any kind of circle or curved shape. So, and if you're not convinced from this animation, I understand, it's just, a, it's just a drawing. But what you could do is get some clay and floss and cut these things a different way to see what's happening. Or if you have these plastic objects, you can shine um, 
you can use light and shadows to also think about cross sections. That's a whole separate conversation. This is just, just the start, really informal kind of light question. Anyway, if you're not convinced here, look up MoMath uh, Wall of Fire. They have a whole exhibit about this. They talk about online. It's really cool. Thanks.